Hey guys, it's Simi and this is Wrestling Unlimited as it's Friday and that means tonight was Friday Night Smackdown and we're going to break down that entire show. I thought the show itself was really good. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, but like I, I am, but I'm not kind of tired already of the whole Roman snapping at Sammy only to apologize like 30, 40 minutes later. It's kind of weird. In my opinion, I don't know how much I like it. So it's like the one thing they've done with the bloodline that I'm kind of iffy on so far. But other than that, I like everything they do with the bloodline. And I thought tonight's show was really good. Every match was important in a way because every match on the show was a tournament match for the SmackDown Tag Team Number One Contenders Tournament. So I loved that. Really, there was no random matches on the show. Like having random matches, I'm not saying is a bad thing. Because sometimes you just want a showcase match for somebody. But I liked that every match tonight mattered. You don't have to do that every week, but every so often, it's a good change of pace. But Luke, what did you think of tonight's SmackDown? Honestly, I thought it was good. Like they did a good job of like building towards stuff, like with the tournament and like KO and Roman, and they did also a good job of like Roman, like kind of like questioning Sammy. They did a good job of like building that up. I mean, there were some, like, interesting things that kind of came out of nowhere, like the Bray Wyatt thing, but, like, we'll get to that later. But Yeah. Yeah, I liked, I liked that every match mattered, like, especially with the tournament. I probably would have done the matches, like, a little differently, maybe, like, matchup-wise. But, yeah, I thought it was a good SmackDown. Yeah, I was shocked too when we saw Firefly Funhouse because I thought when he returned at Extreme Rules, that was the whole, I've released you guys, you guys are now free, and then we'll talk about it, like you said. But they just all woke up in the Funhouse? What the hell was that? <clears throat> like, I don't know, but we'll get into all that and more as we break down tonight's SmackDown. And with that, I want to remind you guys that starting Monday evening, most likely starting Monday evening, with the Raw 30 or Raw XXX review, we will be simultaneously simulcasting these podcasts once again on both Twitter, Twitch. I don't know why I keep saying Twitter. Twitch and YouTube. I got to go through all my stuff through Twitch to make sure I'm allowed to do that because I did sign a contract saying that I was only going to stream on Twitch. But I've seen a lot more people now streaming on both again. So I'm going to go through all my paperwork over the weekend, send an email out to them, and just double check that I can do it. <clears throat> and that everything goes according to plan. And if it does go according to plan, then starting on Monday night, not with the wrap-up in the morning, but Monday evening with the Raw, Raw review, you should be both live on Twitch and YouTube. But if you are watching live right now on YouTube, you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either help us out by hitting that donate button down below or by donating Twitch bits in the live chat. Also remember, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel one of two different ways. You can either subscribe with a uh, tiered subscription, just like eSports Gaming Rules did recently, or you can subscribe with Amazon Prime. Because remember, if you have Amazon Prime or access to somebody's Amazon Prime account, then you have Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming gives you a lot of cool things like free games, free stuff for games, and they always give you one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month. And I'd greatly appreciate it if you did right here, Pro Wrestling Unlimited. On the flip side, if you're watching over on YouTube, you can support us over there as well as becoming a channel member. As a channel member, you get early access to news, early access to podcast episodes, early access to non-news videos, and so much more. Just like next week, you're going to get access to our new AEW graphics packages. And then the following week, you're going to get access to our Royal Rumble graphics packages. So if you want to use any of those on your channels, all we ask is that you credit us when you do use those graphics. If you do get it from us. I've seen some people attempt to use them, but not like they said, hey, I kind of tried to use it, but I, it's not working right for me, this and that. And I, I tried to coach one person in it, and they just didn't know what they were doing in After Effects. So, yeah. But if you guys do want to try and use our graphics packages that I give out for YouTube channel members and Patreon subscribers, all we ask is that you give us credit for creating them originally. And finally, head over to the Epic Game Store. 
head over to the Epic Game Store and buy something. Whether you're buying a new game, whether you're buying an old game, whether you're getting bucks for Rocket League, Fortnite, Fall Guys, or Rumbleverse, or not buying anything, just claiming the free game, put our code in. That's right down here. It's PW Unlimited. Again, use code PW Unlimited at checkout for all Epic Games and Epic Game Store purchases, whether that's on your computer, your PlayStation, your Nintendo Switch, or your Xbox, or in the case of Fortnite, your mobile device. But with that, we've got Friday Night Smackdown to talk about that kicked off with the arrival of the Bloodline. Two SUVs showed up. One saw the Usos and Sammy get out. The other saw Solo Sokoa, Paul Heyman, and Roman Reigns get out. Sammy's standing like kind of like off to the side. And he does his handshake with Jimmy. He does a little deal with Jay. And then he asks for the fist bump from Roman. Roman looks at him and walks off. He's all kinds of confused, not really understanding what's going on. And Haven kind of gave him a look too. So what I'm kind of deducing here is Jimmy, no, Jay was always against Sammy being around. And he finally warmed up to Sammy. But now it feels like Heyman is the one that doesn't like Sammy and doesn't want Sammy around anymore. Any thoughts? Um, yeah, I can see that. I mean, when Jay was against, like, Sammy joining, like, Heyman, like, didn't really care. It was always, like, wherever the Tribal Chief wants. Right. Stuff. <clears throat> and the Tribal Chief and, like, Roman Reigns, like, he was always, like, okay with Sammy. So, it was like, oh, if Roman's okay with it, then I'm okay with it. Right. <clears throat> So I'm going to pull this up on the screen. It's the brackets for the SmackDown Tag Team Number One Contenders Tournament. Um, do I have... Nope, I don't have... Give me one second. I have it here on Twitter. So this is the brackets that kicked off tonight's show. So I have it right here. We could throw this up on the screen just to show up the matchups that we did get tonight on Friday Night SmackDown. The opening match did see Drew McIntyre and Sheamus take on the Viking Raiders. We then saw Los Lotharios take on Hit Row. The Brawling Brutes took on the team of Imperium. And Maximum Male Models did face off against Legato Del Fantasma. Like I said, Drew McIntyre and Sheamus against the Viking Raiders did open up tonight's Friday Night SmackDown. And oops, I just closed the wrong window. Let me reopen my notes here. Uh, there we go. So this match, I thought this was a fantastic opener to the show. I really thoroughly enjoyed the match. Before the match got going, like all teams came out, and right before the bell rang, Michael Cole did mention the passing of Jay Briscoe and sent condolences to the family, and the Viking Raiders both had armbands on that said, Dem boys. They didn't wait for the bell to ring, though, and they all just started brawling. Sheamus took over, hitting the 10 beats of the Baldrin on both Viking Raiders. Sheamus went for the white noise on Eric, but Ivar cut him off. Ivar and Eric worked together to take over as they cut to the break. The Viking Raiders were firmly in control and isolated Sheamus on their side of the ring. Sheamus fought back and broke free with an uppercut. Eric then fired back with some stiff forearms. Sheamus recovered and hit the Irish Curse backbreaker to a huge pop. McIntyre got the hot tag and got another big pop from it. McIntyre then ran wild on the Viking Raiders with dueling neck breakers. He then went for the Future Shock DDT, but Ivar backed him into the corner. After a commercial break, McIntyre recovered and hit a Future Shock DDT on Ivar. McIntyre went for the Claymore, but Ivar countered it. Sheamus and Eric then tagged in and started trading shots. Sheamus went for the Bro Kick, but Valhalla jumped up on the apron to cause the distraction, and the Viking Raiders did take advantage of it. Ivar hit a big splash on Sheamus for a very close near fall. The Viking Raiders then set up for their springboard kick German suplex, but Sheamus did break free. McIntyre took out Eric with a Claymore. Sheamus then came in with a bro kick on Ivar and picked up the victory to advance into the second round. So there we go. Sheamus and McIntyre do advance into round two. I thought, I thought it was kind of weird at first that Sheamus and McIntyre won because, you know, like, they were kind of pushing for like the Viking Raiders as a, this like big, like kind of dominant tag team for a little while. 
And then they just like casually lost in like the first round of this tournament. Yeah, I get that. But honestly, I think it's going to end up being Drew and Sheamus winning it to face the Usos again. <clears throat> so, I mean, or, or, or go for it. What's your or? Or <clears throat> what if we see Drew and Sheamus in the finals with Imperium? Gunther screws over Sheamus, and then maybe that could lead to Sheamus challenging Gunther for the IC title at Mania. That. And maybe we maybe we see Sheamus winning the belt, finally seeing him win every single title in WWE, like at least on main roster. I actually really like that. I know there's the report of Gunther versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, yet I actually really like Sheamus challenging him and winning and getting that final belt at Mania. So we'll see how they go. I think that's a great, great idea. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, plans could always change. I mean, oh, yeah. I know it was reported that it was Brock and Gunther, but, you know, like, plans could change. Maybe they decide to do something else with Brock, or maybe Brock just says, I don't really feel like working Mania or something. I don't know. And when those reports came out of Brock versus Gunther, it was stated, hey, this is an idea on the table, not something set in stone. We go into the back, and Sami Zayn approaches Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman in the dressing room. Weird way to, to film this, the way it was, like, angled kind of up from, from the ground, right on, on Roman, and then you had Heyman up here, and you had, um, well, actually, look at this, Heyman up here, excuse me, Heyman up here, and um, Sammy over here, or whatever. And this is a weird one, because, so, Sammy comes in, and he's like, hey, I just, I just want to talk about last week. And Roman's like, what about it? Like, he's like, I didn't know the Usos were going to be there. And Roman's like, and he's like, also, what was with earlier? And you didn't give me the fist bump. He's like, well, I, I saw the way you looked at everything happening last week. What was that look for? And Sammy's like, well, I, again, I didn't know the Usos were coming out. I felt a little slighted not getting a heads up on that. And I thought that I was the one that was supposed to take care of the KO problem. And I had it under control. Roman then flips his lid and goes, excuse me. I'm the tribal chief. I didn't think I needed to run my plans against the honorary Us. I didn't think I had to tell you what I wanted to do. I run this. I make the decisions. It's all on me is basically what he said. And Sam's like, whoa, that's, that's not what I meant at all. I just would have liked it in a little bit of heads up to know that they were going to come out so I maybe could have done things differently or whatever. And Roman's just like, get out. And when he said that, Heyman goes, whoa. He like kind of like jumped in his seat a little bit like, oh, I didn't expect that. And Sammy's like, what? What? He goes, oh, well, I, I said, get out. Why don't you go find KO? Go hang out with KO. Go, go play around with Kevin Owens. And Sammy's like, oh, um, uh, okay. Sure. And Sammy, or Heyman kind of was just like, he's set to go. You need to go. And so Sammy runs out the broom. Very interesting that he blew up on Sammy again. I mean, I think, I think what they're going here is at first, maybe Sammy's just kind of confused what's going on without like people actually telling him. And then Roman's like, like, what the heck? Why are you? Why do you see so like confused and stuff? Are you having like second thoughts or something? Right. I feel like that's what they're going at first. I mean, maybe we can see like Sammy attempting to help KO at Rumble. I don't know. Or maybe like Sammy's just out of it and then like doesn't help KO at all. And then we just see Roman like, if you want to prove your your loyalty to us, I want you to face me at Elimination Chamber. Right. So, like, I don't know. We'll see where this goes. So, LA Knight makes his way out to the ring. We get some Bray Wyatt logos flashing on the screen. Raquel Rodriguez then does a promo backstage, promising to win the Women's Rumble. So, LA Knight took on Greg Jones in 35 minutes. Before the match, LA Knight talked about his upcoming match with Bray Wyatt, the pitched black match. He noted that Wyatt admitted that he was Uncle Howdy last week. He promised to beat Wyatt in the pitch black match. And I think on commentary, they're like, yeah, we have no clue what this match is and what the rules are, but it's going to be something in the dark. So, LA Knight wins. Match goes, like I said, 
35 seconds or so. Not long at all. And then all of a sudden, stuff starts flashing. Bray Wyatt logos. And then the screen's glitching, like the, the big Titan Tron. And we get Firefly Funhouse. And I'm like, what the fuck? Firefly Funhouse. And it goes to the Funhouse. The puppets are all there. They're waking up. They're shaking the dust off of themselves. And Ramblin' Rabbit says that he likes L.A. Knight. He said, Knight's like The Miz, but with muscles. We then see Bray Wyatt with his ass out, and they blurred his butt crack. Or not blurred it, but they put the Bray Wyatt logo over his butt crack. And he was, like, fixing the door or whatever, and he laughs. And he said the idea of someone... Named that someone named their child Los Angeles Knight is funny. Uncle Howdy video then interrupts. Howdy said he was right, and Wyatt just needed a little push. They cut back to Wyatt, and he blamed LA Knight for opening the door. Now, whatever comes through this door, well, that's Knight's problem. So, I mean, I didn't hate it, but it was interesting. I did pop when he's like, who would name their child Los Angeles Knight? I thought that was pretty funny. I thought it was kind of like, I thought it was like out of nowhere that the Firefly oh, yeah. Funhouse like came out, just randomly popped up. Like my gut's telling me that this might have been like a Vince McMahon move. I don't know for sure, but mm. I don't know. But and some people are saying, could we see the Fiend at Royal Rumble? Oh, very possible. Because I think we're gonna we're getting. All the different versions of Bray right now. Last week he was old swamp Louisiana Bray. Now he's Funhouse Bray. So yeah, maybe next week or at the Rumble we see Fiend in some capacity within the um, pitch black match. So basically, it's kind of like every week. It's just like different versions of Bray. Where so they're not really like sticking with fire. Firefly House Bray. If I'm to make an assumption, I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't be against it, but like, it would just be like kind of weird. Cause like, when he returned, like you said, when he returned, he kind of like, like released the mm -hmm. characters of the Firefly Fun House. Exactly. It would have made more, it would have made more sense if they did this like, segment and like all the puppets were like we're just like dead sort of and they're like like hi and stuff like without like the puppets even like talking well i mean we were supposed to be under the assumption that they had come back to life or something so i believe that's what it was supposed to be as we move forward we had another tag team tournament match Hold on. go for it go for it uh, Maglord in the chat says, "Can't wait for Alexa to be in the Fun House again." Well, we don't really know what's what they're doing with Alexa right now. We don't even know if the Fun House is going to come back again. Yeah, so like we can't really make an <clears throat> assumption that Alexa is going to be back in the Fun House, right? Especially with and like Uncle Howdy, go for it. And like Uncle Howdy's like has nothing to do with the Fun House anyway. So right. I mean, if they're doing this with Bray, then maybe. We get a week or so of Alexa's Playhouse. Maybe not her in the Fun House. Maybe her on her swing set. But as we go forward, we had Hit Row against Los Lotharios. Match only went two minutes and 45 seconds. They tried to cram a bunch into a two and a half minute match. Michael Cole made fun of Top Dalla for messing up his dive weeks ago. And I'm like, come on. Can we just get past this? Los Lotharios had the early advantage. And we hit a double super kick on Ashanti the Adonis. However, Adonis fought back and tagged Top Dalla. Cole made fun of Top Dalla yet again, and Top Dalla heard Cole. And so he dragged Angel over to the announce desk and yelled at Cole to stop. Umberto then got the tag and ran wild. He caught Adonis with a second rope sunset flip for a near fall. Angel and Umberto hit double suicide dives. The finish then came when B-Fab grabbed Angel's leg. Adonis rolled him up and picked up the victory. So next week, it will be Drew McIntyre and Sheamus against Hit Row. I mean, I'm sure it'll be a decent match. Yeah. Any thoughts on this? What are your match? thoughts on like Hit Row being healed? Being healed. Uh, what are your thoughts on Hit Row's heel? Yeah. 
I mean, I, I see it coming, but at the same time tonight, I feel like they were more of the baby faces in the match. So it's like, kind of feel like a start and stop kind of thing. I mean, I thought there were heels at the point where they were yelling at Michael Cole. I mean, a little bit, I guess. But it's more of, hey, get past it, Cole. It's happened. Uh, and, like, in it. their own way, though, like, like if someone's making fun of you, you should defend yourself. Exactly. So, to, so like, to themselves, like, they're not heels, but everyone else probably thinks they're heels. Uh, Ethan's the... Yeah, yeah, that makes 100% sense. Uh, Ethan's, the poll is not messed up. It's the same way I do it every week. I don't know what you mean by the poll is messed up. Anyways, so next week, like I said, it will be Hit Row against Drew and Sheamus. We then got the same Cody Rhodes video package we got back on Monday with Cody announcing he will be back in the Royal Rumble. We then got a video from Braun Strowman. He cut a promo, basically promising to win the Royal Rumble. Then we got a Charlotte Flair segment. And this whole Flair... Sonya Deville thing, I don't know about it. I'm not a fan, especially after Sonya, like, just lost. Like, like Adam Pierce told her, you lost. That doesn't mean I can just give you another shot, regardless of what you do. And the fans liked this segment. They were really into it. So that's a plus. Also, they're in Detroit. Apparently, there was, like, an ammonia leak in this building 24 hours prior, so... Kudos on whoever had to take care of that and got it all good before WWE had to get in there and start setting their stuff up. So we got the match flow of the week, which recapped Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville's feud. SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair then entered the ring with a big reaction from the crowd in Detroit. She wasted no time and addressed her problems with Sonya. Flair told her not to cry to Adam Pearce, but come face her in the ring. Sonya would... <coughs> Excuse me, Sonya would walk out and mock the Detroit fans. She said that she only cares about getting a title shot. She doesn't care what they want and only cares about what she wants. Fans broke out into a you suck chant, and not in the good way that they do for Kurt Angle. The building claimed that she was a star, and that the fans broke out into another you suck chant. Claire then noted that she had beaten DeVille already and made her tap out. Fans broke into a you tapped out chant. Flair told DeVille to enter the Rumble like every other woman and earn a shot. Flair doesn't want to fight. Uh, Flair does want to fight. Wait. Flair does want to fight and be challenged by DeVille if she, if she wants, but not at the Rumble. She said, maybe we could do it right now, and DeVille refused unless it was, the title was on the line. And it appears to finally make his way out and started speaking, and instead, DeVille would attack Flair from behind as DeVille walked to the back, Pierce noted, they need to talk. Wasn't a fan of this. Like I've, I'm not a fan of somebody getting beat and then going, oh, well, I want another shot. Now, if it's the champ lost to their title and they just want a rematch to try to get it back, that's a whole different story. But if someone comes out and randomly challenges the champion and gets beat, why should they get another shot so quickly without earning it or even having another match to go look? I can beat this person this quick. I could beat you. Give me no, you know, no. She hasn't done anything to even deserve another shot at the belt. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And like, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you think they're actually like building towards like maybe Sonya versus Charlotte at Royal Rumble? Yeah. Like just to give Charlotte an opponent? <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately. Why is it Sonya Deville? Like, do they just, just like randomly just pick her? Yeah. It's basically. Like, who, who can we just have Charlotte go out there and destroy? That's basically all it is. I can honestly see maybe. Because, like, we don't really know, like, who's, like, the easy pick for, like, the women's rumble. Maybe, maybe it's going to be Ronda again, and then she challenges Charlotte again. Like, I want my title back. Yeah. Or maybe, I'd say, or maybe they I'd go, say, uh, go for it. Say it. You can go for it. Oh, I was going to say, maybe they go a similar route, and instead of it being Ronda, it's Shayna. 
I would be okay with Shayna. Yeah, me too. I think that'd be a cool matchup. Shayna versus Charlotte for the title of Mania. And I, ooh, this, this could be like a good storyline right here. Maybe Shayna beats Charlotte and then kind of like, Abandons Ronda saying, like, I never needed you. You just needed me. Like, yeah, maybe. Thing. maybe that can set like a Shayna versus Ronda storyline after Mania. That'd be fun. We're back at the Bloodlines locker room. So, I mean, he walks back in. He's like, uh, well, uh, you said you wanted to see me? And, uh, Reigns wanted Heyman's opinion. Well, first, Reigns wanted Heyman's opinion. On the Sami Zayn, on Sami Zayn earlier. So actually, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I have my segments here mixed up. Um, where was I? Roman wanted Heyman's opinion on the conversation with Sami earlier. Heyman said he doesn't really like Sami. And with the contract signing coming up, he thinks it's better to have Zayn on their side than the other side. Heyman stated that it would be better to have Sami in the castle... Pissing out in the castle, pissing out instead of being trouble on the outside, pissing on the castle. So, yeah, Heyman basically said it. I don't like him, but I'd rather have him on our side so he doesn't try to screw with us helping Kevin Owens. I mean, he's probably saying that because maybe that's what he thinks Roman wants, like, because he base like, Heyman's whole thing is, like, like he's okay with whatever the tribal chief wants. So, he, in his mind, he probably thinks, that, well, if the tribal chief doesn't like Sammy, then I won't like him either. Right. So, then they showed us another Lacey Evans training video where, basically, they're like, she's perfecting the camel clutch. She's the new, what's the word I'm looking for? Not the new Sergeant Slaughter, in a way, but... The new keeper of the camel clutch, I guess. I mean, she could be a potential return for the Royal Rumble, in my opinion. Oh, thousand percent thinks she's going to be in the Rumble. Why wouldn't she? Like, there's no reason why she shouldn't. She's not out with an injury. She's not out suspended for any sort of reason or anything. There's no reason why she shouldn't when they got to fill 30 dang slots. But moving forward, we had another first round match in the tag title tournament. Well, the tag team number one contenders tournament. This match, super good. It went about nine minutes or so, maybe a little past nine minutes. And it was Imperium, Giovanna Vinci, and Ludwig Kaiser against the Brawling Brutes, Butch, and Ridge Holland. Again, this match was great. And I thought it went perfect time. Right between nine and 10 minutes, it was great. So Vinci and Kaiser isolated Butch on their side of the ring early. Butch tried fighting back by attacking Kaiser's hand. Imperium then regained control and rocked Ridge Holland on the apron. Back from a break, Holland got the hot tag. He ran wild on Kaiser with a running power slam. Butch then hit a moonsault off the apron on DaVinci. Butch then climbed to the top rope, and Vinci caused the distraction, throwing Holland into the steps. Back in the ring, Butch got the ankle lock on Kaiser and switched to an armbar. Kaiser dragged Butch to the uh, ringside, and broke the hold. Vinci then got the tag and hit a moonsault for a near fall. Butch fought with Vinci on the apron and Kaiser in the ring. Butch knocked Vinci off the apron. Kaiser then took advantage and knocked Butch back off uh, back off the... I wrote this weird. Kicked Butch in the head. Okay, I wrote it weird. I said kicked Butch off the head. I don't know why. Butch then fell. <clears throat> but Vinci caught him in a suplex and hit him with a brain buster. Back in the ring, Imperium hit the Imperium bomb on Ridge Holland and picked up the victory, so they advance to the next round of the tournament. I thought this match was really good, really fun, and it's four guys that have worked together in the past and have really great chemistry. Yes, and I, I and going into this match, I felt like Imperium needed this, this win. Oh yeah, because it would have helped them. It would have helped them like feel like a a great tag team and not just like guys with Gunther. Cause we haven't really seen them like, like be a dominant tag team ever since they came onto the main roster. So I mm -hmm. feel like this was a good moment to see them like stand out a little bit. 
Yes, I think Imperium winning was the right call, but but how fun would a Sheamus and Drew McIntyre versus Ridge and Butch match? How much fun could have that been, though? That would have been great. <clears throat> yeah, that would have been fun, but I kind of feel like maybe I kind of feel like Imperium should be in the finals of this match with Drew and Sheamus. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not what's where I'm looking for. Like I said, though, it go for it. Because, like I said, it would be good storyline to like start off a potential like Sheamus versus Gunther right. match at <clears throat> Mania. So right, and I'm not saying that Imperium winning was the wrong call. I thought that was the right call, but I'm just saying like a match between those four though with the Brawling Brutes having to face Sheamus and Drew would have been an interesting dynamic and really fun. So Paul Heyman. Oh, yeah. I would Go agree. <clears throat> so Paul, I would, yeah, oh, yeah, I would agree with that. So Paul Heyman approaches Sami Zayn in the back, and he's like, "Hey, uh, the Tribal Chief would like to speak with you." Now, correct me if I'm wrong here. This Raw 30 video was this way longer than the one we got on Raw, or was I just not pay enough attention to the one on Raw? It felt like they added more clips to it. Oh yeah, they did. They added uh. They had Daniel Bryan, Chris Jericho stuff. Yeah. Those are two very and big raw have, moments. Did they had some big they had some big show stuff as well. Yes. I think. Yes. But this is a great video. It got me excited. And now all I'm saying is uh first off, what is this blue dob and D ripoff song? I never heard this before. And we need to get a retro set for next oh, yeah, week's I raw. Have. We need to get, I think I might have, but I don't think I've heard, I don't know. I may have heard it once or twice. I don't know. But I think we need to get a retro set. We don't need the regular just big-ass screen. They need to bring, like, like the old Titantron back or something with no video walls, just a one regular video screen. Yeah, I want to see something, like, extra special for next week's Raw as far as the set does go. That'd be fantastic. Doubt they do anything different, but other than, like, change the graphics... But hey, one can hope. You know, it would be cool. What? If they brought back the fist. But that's SmackDown. Like the. But that's SmackDown, not oh, Raw. Smack the fist is SmackDown. I it was both. Nope. The fist was never on Raw. Fist was always SmackDown. Ah, uh, Magmalore says it's a BB Rexa song. Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's like a. It's supposed to be a modern day version of like I'm blue. Yeah. But no, the fist was always SmackDown. So we got to change. They do something like special, like as far as the like raw stage back in the day. Well, the raw stage was iconic for being simple. Once they added the Titan Tron, because I mean, if you don't remember, like, the original Raw set, once they got out of the Manhattan Center, was just three, like, letters, R-A-W, and the wrestlers walked out. And then they finally added the big Titan Tron with the big Raw's War banner. And it was just, it's just a great look. It's just a plain black set with the entrance of the WWE logo or whatever in the middle where they walked out, and then the Titan Tron. So, they never, I don't think, had a super specific Raw set like they did for... SmackDown in the fist. Let me look something up. Monday Night Raw sets. See if I can find like a bunch. Of the evo here we go. The evolution. There we go. This is from oh WWE's website right here. I'm gonna pull this up on the screen really fast. Um, so the evolution of the Raw set. This is what we got. This is the original Raw set from the Manhattan Center. And it kind of evolves here to just the R-A-W letters. Then we get this one where it's just the screen and the curtain. So it's a screen and a curtain. And then they have like lights behind it and this and that to kind of like brighten things up a little bit. And then they take the curtain away and they have the WWE logo back here where you kind of can see it behind Undertaker. <coughs> and then this is the most probably like, <coughs> excuse me. Iconic Raw set. Just, just the one screen. The big Raw's War banner. 
and then like a smaller little deal right here under. And then as we keep going and we keep going and see what else they have on this. I don't know how long ago this was actually posted. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about with the WWF logo or the WWE logo here in the middle, right under where they walk out. And then they would start to add, and then they would evolve it a little bit. And they would add video screens on either side with the raw logo flashing. Then they had this raw set. This was the first like big change to the raw set when they added all these little like lighting fixtures and they had the, the rivets and the bolts and all that. And they made it look very metal. That was like 2003. They're Bischoff era. As we keep going forward. Let's see what else we have. Similar, but they changed up the screens and the, the lighting on the sides. <clears throat> you see it better than that, that shot. Um, and then this was when WWE went HD and everybody had the same set. And this is when Raw, SmackDown, and ECW all had the same set. You can see it better here. It's got like the swooshing lines here. It's got the big old... Logo screen there, another screen over here. And they changed it up. Oh, then there's also when they had the big ass WWE logo on this actual stage. Let me keep going forward. <clears throat> and that's all they have on this one. And then we got like, I think that the next change was. 2016? No, there was something before 2016. But they, when they did the draft in 2016, they had a really intricate-looking stage with a lot of lighting rigs and fixtures and stuff, and that didn't really last long. So, yeah, I think the most iconic one is just the plain raw set with the big Raw's war banner on the side, or the plain raw set with the two video screens coming down on either side. So... If they want to bring one of those back for Raw 30, I'd be more than happy to see that. Yeah, I think they should do something like that. If they're going to like do like a big like Raw celebration, they should bring back something iconic yeah. from like some of the past Raw shows. Because they didn't, for, and correct me if I'm wrong, Raw 20 or Raw 25, they didn't bring any special signal. No. One of those they may have. One of those they may have. They did. I, they did. They did like the, like the two like separate buildings. I think. Well, they did that, but I'm trying to think. I think there may have been a raw, a special raw where they brought back just like the R A W letters, but now I can't remember. I could be misthinking that. There was a, oh now I'm trying to remember because there was a raw. In the last 10 years, where they like, maybe it was Raw Legend. No, it wasn't Legends Night. If anybody in the chat knows what I'm talking about, where they brought back like an iconic, just the Raw with the three letters. Maybe I'm thinking wrong, but if anybody can remember what I'm trying to remember, man, now I can't. I don't even know what to look up. Raw. Hold on. Let me see something here real fast. I'm going to Google something. Monday. Night Raw special. Let's see if this comes up. I don't remember what year Magma Lord. Oh, I found it. I found it. I think I found it. 2014 Old School Raw. Old School Raw. So it was a mix of. Okay, okay, okay. I found it. 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 This is exactly what I was thinking of. This one, where they brought back the old look, the screen, and the R.A.W. letters. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. This is the one right here. 2014. Old school Raw. That'd be cool to bring back. Yeah, just bring back the old school Raw set, because that was nice. I liked that one. And instead of like the WWF logo, let's just change it to your like regular WWE logo. Well, that's what they did. Watch. Um, so I can find another. I can find another picture. I think this is it. 
Let me see this one really fast. Um, no, it is just the, no, yeah, it's the, they used the WWF logo. But yeah, old school raw set. That'd be fun if they used that for Monday Night Raw. But as we go forward here, Shayna Baszler segment where she basically just said, it's hard to win the Rumble with a messed up ankle. It's hard to win the Rumble with a, a broken arm. It's hard to win the Rumble with your shoulder out of socket. That's what I'm going to do to the women as I throw them out of the Rumble. Michael Cole also made note that Ronda or no, Charlotte, Shayna Baszler tied the record last year of most eliminations in a women's Rumble with Bianca Belair at eight. We then got a Karrion Cross Scarlet segment in the back for Cross's upcoming match next week with Rey Mysterio. Cross claimed that Mysterio could either be a family man or the greatest, but he can't be both. After Cross beats Mysterio, he's going to win the Rumble. So let me go on to our final match of the night. It's Legado del Fantasma, Joaquin Wilde, and Cruz del Toro. Almost said Raul Mendoza, but he's not that no more. Against maximum male models. So the match itself went three minutes and... It was an all right match. Nothing special. Selena Vega joins commentary and Wade Barrett's like, so I hear you've got breaking news. She goes, I do have breaking news. Legato Del Fantasma is going to win this match. They're going to win the tournament. No, by the way, I'm entering the women's rumble. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's a no brainer. You're going to be in the rumble. They need as many women as they can. So the match Saw the models briefly in control early. They teased a dive, but then posed instead. Escobar gave Del Toro and Wild a pep talk. Wild and Del Toro then took over and sent the models to ringside. Wild and Del Toro went for a double suicide dive, but Masse was out of place. Wild then stopped dead in his tracks. He looked for Masse and found him on the outside of the ring. Wild then took out Masse with a dive. Legado del Fantasma then hit a Russian leg sweep Enziguri combo on Mansoor to pick up the victory and advance to the finals. The next week, or the semifinals. So next week, it will be Legado del Fantasma against Imperium in a semifinal matchup. Any thoughts on the match? Uh, I mean, there wasn't much to it. I mean, it was it was kind of a short match, and I kind of knew Legado was going to win. Oh, yeah. And Maglamore... Magmorn in the chat says, I like how Cole noted the YouTube segments of Mace going missing. Right. <clears throat> I've seen a couple yeah. of those clips on Twitter. I've never watched the actual YouTube videos in full, but I have seen some of the clips and they, they seem pretty funny. I like the one where they had like Byron Saxton try out for the male models and he like, he like bends over and there was, and it's like the shine ref was bald head. Mm, I, I thought saw that, that was clip. pretty funny. I saw that one clipped out on YouTube or on Twitter. Sammy approaches Roman in the locker room. He slowly enters and seemed scared. Reigns then admitted that we all know uh, I got a bad temper sometimes. Said he understands that Sammy wanted to know what the plan was last week. Reigns then praised Sammy this time and said, I think we're on the same page. Sammy was relieved to hear the Reigns say to hear Reigns say that. Reigns just wanted the same love and loyalty that he shows the people. Zane praised Reigns and promised to do whatever it took to be with the bloodline, whatever it took to help the family. Reigns then uh, told Sammy to find the Usos and get the SUV and private jet ready. Reigns, Heyman, and Solo will go to the ring for the contract signing, but he wants to leave quickly. Heyman was great here as he wiped away his tears. Sammy asked for a fist bump. Roman kind of said, not right now, and Sammy left. So there we go. And then have the contract signing. But what did you think of all these locker room segments with Roman and Sammy? Um, they're solid, like storyline builds. The one thing that kind of caught my attention was like, like get the SUV and private jet, right? All you guys came in the SUV. Like, where'd the private jet come from? Well, they got to get the private jet to go back to Florida from Detroit. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> But yeah, like, th 
this is a I, I mean i guess they kind of worded it a little <clears throat> differently though yeah it will basically what he was telling them was get the suvs ready in the parking lot call the airport and tell them we need that jet on standby basically what he meant yeah and yeah like this is like it, it's kind of cool to like do these segments and like kind of like get the fans like start thinking it's like all right it's like sammy gonna turn on roman or is roman just gonna like get tired of sammy right it's, i like how they do these segments to like kind of get the fans start thinking and like not like do something that's extremely obvious. Exactly. And Mr. Bangs in the chat says, Weird Sammy hasn't done anything yet to make Roman suspicious, has he? So yes and no. The reason Roman was mad tonight was because he thought Sammy was possibly showing remorse for Kevin Owens getting attacked and put through the table last week. He thought that Sammy may have been upset with the Usos and Solo for what they did to Kevin Owens last week. And if he's upset because of all that, then he is not 100% with the bloodline because if he's 100% with the bloodline, he would have been happy to have the Usos and Solo come and help him. So that's where Roman was kind of iffy on Sammy at the start of the show as far as he thought Sammy was feeling like he almost couldn't trust them in a way because of the looks and the hesitation he was showing at the end of last week's SmackDown. So as far as the contract signing does go to close out the show, I thought this was simple, yet effective, and really, really good. So all we see is Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, and Paul Heyman. And um, they all come out. Roman sits down. And Michael Cole says that he felt for Sammy being so gullible. Cole pushed that Reigns is jealous of Sammy and his popularity. Reigns then sat at the head of the table with his feet up on the con on the table waiting for the contract signing to begin. But Owen's music never plays because, well, he just comes out of nowhere and jumps Solo Sokoa from behind. He jumps in the ring, and before Roman can do anything, he hits Roman with a stunner to a huge pop from the crowd, and out comes the Usos. Owens would then fight them off as Sammy slowly makes his way out. Back in the ring... He will then give Roman Reigns a pop-up powerbomb through the table to a tremendous pop from the crowd in Detroit. Owens would then sign the contract, and we see that he's wearing an armband that says J for Jay Briscoe. Sammy would then jump up on the apron and have a brief stare down with Kevin Owens. Owens then turned around and just ran off through the crowd. Owens then watched back from the crowd as Sokoa and the Usos all checked on Reigns, yet Sammy was shocked by all this and did not assist the other three in checking on Roman. So there's another thing that Roman can be mad about that Sammy wasn't with the other members of the bloodline to check on him in his moment of a weakness thoughts. Yeah. They're really like going all in on this, like Sammy stuff right now. Oh yeah. And, and I, I like it. I really do. Yeah, it's the best thing in wrestling right now. As far as next week's show does go, Karrion Cross will be going one-on-one -on -one with Rey Mysterio, and we have two semifinal matches in the SmackDown Tag Team Number One Contenders Tournament. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus will take on Hit Row, and the God of El Phantasma will be taking on the team of Imperium. So with that, that's all we got for tonight's Friday Night SmackDown. If you want to be part of the show, remember you can text in at 2510 9 906-1341. Again, that's 510-906-1341. <clears throat> so I will say the text messages may be going away soon. Just a heads up. But as we load those up, we also got to check the polls. As far as the Twitch poll does go. Uh, Jordan, I don't think I'm going to be live on my other channel tonight. Because I have some non-wrestling graphics work and business stuff I have to take care of for a client. 80% um, liked the show with 20% saying it was just alright. As far as the Twitter poll does go. 75% liked the show. 
23% thought it was just all right, and 2% did not like SmackDown. And finally, the YouTube poll, 76% liked the show, 17% thought it was just all right, and 7% did not like it. Hunter says it was a great ending, good one for Hunter on, or good on Hunter for nailing it. Um, this one says, the Helmsley era destroys the McMahon era office cuts. Uh, amazing. Another person says amazing. This person says six out of ten. As far as the text messages do go, it says who are your favorites or who's your pick to win the number one contender tag team tournament? I mean, I think we've already mentioned this, but I'm saying Drew and Sheamus to win it all. I got Imperium winning it all. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No, like the well, tournament. Yeah, yeah. tournament though. Winning the whole thing and facing the Usos. Uh, tournament, yes, but I don't think they beat the Usos. Okay, I mean, I mean, your theory of Gunther screwing Sheamus makes sense for the Imperium winning. So yeah, uh, this person says tonight's tag team tournament proved that Vince is not in charge of creative anymore. He hates tag teams. If you remember, what do you guys? Uh, if you remember, what do you guys think? We will see. Th- through, uh, blah, blah, blah. did you see Naomi's Twitter activity? Yes, but there's some stuff with that. I guess I can touch on that really quickly. So I had to pull it up really fast. So Naomi responded to a report from Fightful that was actually misreported as far as what she read, and she deleted it. Never mind, I can't pull it back. So, <clears throat> well, actually, I know where it came from originally. Give me two seconds, guys. Give me two seconds. Because Naomi actually apologized to Sean Ross Sapp. So we're going to get into all this in just one moment. Um, bum, 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 Let's see. Mm, we got that there. So I think this is the right. Let me see. All right, no, that's not the right one because she deleted that. All right, so I can't find the original thing that she tweeted out, but Fightful had a report this morning that we did talk about on the wrestling wrap-up that was basically giving an update on Naomi, saying that people in the company think she will return, that when she left, her contract was soon to expire, and at that time before she walked out, many thought that she was going to resign and was excited to resign with the company. Well, the way I think it might have been ringside news aggregated that story, they actually changed it a little bit and didn't fully report it properly, making it sound like this was something new and that she was excited to sign a new contract right now. She then takes that screenshot from, I believe it's ringside news, and states, not true, just straight up, not true. So Sean Ross Sapp actually ends up um hold on. Yeah, so Sean Ross Sapp actually jumps in there and was like, hey, this is not exactly the correct context. He says, I just reread this. <clears throat> yeah, this is lacking context. WWE had told me that they thought she was going to resign before the situation, which meant before she walked out, and things were headed that way. But this isn't about now, it's about then. Whoever posted what whoever posted this wherever she got the screenshot was really weird in the way they applied the context here. Sean then comes back and says, the screenshot is from Ringside News, not our site. Basically saying that they changed the context in their report or their post to make it sound like this was something new and not Sean talking about eight months ago. So Naomi then deletes her post of not true and and uh, quote tweets Sean saying, apologies, understood. So that's all cleared up. That's all that was. I think we have one more text message here trying to get it to load. Uh, two more text messages. This one says, who do you think turns on who? Sammy on the bloodline or the bloodline on Sammy? Bloodline on Sammy. 
Yeah, I'll probably go Bloodline. And this one says a lot of rock on the Raw video tonight. Yeah, but I don't think that means anything. There's a lot of there's Austin. There's Big Show. There was Daniel Bryan. There was Chris Jericho. That don't mean nothing. So I don't think it means anything. But with that, guys, that's going to wrap everything up. I want to say thank you if you are watching live, twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited, or if you're watching or listening later, whether that's youtube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited or podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. With that, guys, We'll be back live Monday morning for the wrestling wrap-up. I'm going to go freeze my balls off tomorrow morning at the gun range because I have to teach a CCW class. It's going to be like 34, 35 degrees at 8 a.m. when I got to be out there. So pray for me that I don't freeze over or anything. But with that, have a great rest of your night. Have a great weekend. We'll see you guys back here Monday. Monday morning for the wrap-up and Monday evening for Monday Night Raw. Have a good one, guys.